have been bullied by Melina and Jewel to do a book haul about all of my true reads for April, of which there are a lot because I'm a hoarder and I started working at a new job and now I have money to buy books and I've bought way too many books. So we're going to get started with um, the one that most relates to what I just finished reading, A Ring of End Endless Light by Madeline LaAngle, who um, was our booktube uh, book club book for the uh, past couple weeks. So that'll be on our booktube channel. But I want to read on my to-read list is Wrinkle in Time. Obviously, it's becoming a movie, and for some reason, despite being a huge bookworm as a child, I never read it, and I feel like it deprived me of my childhood not reading that beforehand. So I'm going to read it now so I can figure out why everyone loves it. The next couple um, books on my in my book haul are um, rereads due to the fact that there's a new book coming out. I am one of those people where I can't read a book in, like, a new book in a series without reading all of the previous ones, which is a huge pain, but um, also I love rereading because I always think of it as you get to revisit your old friends. So maybe that's why I'm really into fan fiction, because I just like to read the same characters, my friends, over and over and over again, even if they're doing the exact same thing. So... Um, the book that just came out, The Case for Jamie by Brittany Cavallaro, Cavallaro. I um, apologize for all of my pronunciation issues. I can spell like nobody's business, but I cannot make words come out of my mouth correctly. So anyways, the first book in the series is A Study in Charlotte. So this is um, a modern day Sherlock Holmes book where... Um, it as, is as if Sherlock Holmes and James Watson had actually existed in London all those years ago. And so these are their ancestors, is Charlotte Holmes and Jamie Watson. And they are teenagers that meet at a prep school in Connecticut. And they start solving mysteries, and it's really adorable. Charlotte is amazing. She is... Um, Everything that you imagine pretty much Sherlock's Holmes would be if he were a female. It's great, a lot of teenage angst, but also a lot of intelligence in the story. Um, I highly recommend it, and I'm really excited to read the third. It's the third installment in the series, so I have to read this. And I think the other one is called The Last of August. I don't have it hard copy. I have it on... I think either the Kindle or the Nook app, both of which are on my phone. So I read those when I sit around waiting in doctor's offices instead of browsing on social media. And so people probably think I'm on my phone a lot doing dumb phone things and I'm actually reading books so I can feel a little bit highbrow and good about myself that way. So I'm looking down my nose at all you other people that sit on your phones. Sorry. Um, not really. Anyways, I'm going to smile more. I am nervous and so I'm talking instead of smiling. So I'm going to try to smile more. Except for not right now because the next book on my list is pretty much the reason I have depression, I'm pretty sure. Um, Philip Pullman. I have, this is the British version. Um, so you guys know it as Golden Compass. This is Northern Lights is what the title was in Britain. I don't know um, why they're different. But um, I need to reread the series because the new book, The Book of Dust, just came out. And so I need to read this. But in order to do that, I've decided to tear out my soul, um, cut it into shreds, and reread the entire series. So if you haven't reread this series, I both highly suggest it and warn you away from it. I cried probably for a month after I finished the last book in the series, The Amber Spyglass. Um, ask Melina as well and Jewel and just about anyone else who has read it how they feel and they will um, start having PTSD flashbacks and may start crying so that's how much of an emotional impact but really these books rocked my world and um, I'm excited to see what Philip Pullman came up with 
for the new series and where that's going to go. Next is um, more fantasy because I am a hoe for fantasy books. Um, you guys may know this one. It's A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. The third book in the series came out a while ago and I keep on putting off reading it because I am lazy and never read what is actually on my to-read list. I find new books and read them. But I'm going to finally do it in April. Or I'm going to say I'm going to do it and lie to myself for another three months the way I have been. But I really do want to, I am excited to reread the series because um, it's just one of the great modern fantasy epics. Um, it's, I say if you're a Harry Potter person, this is a good book to grow up into. It has the same intense world building. Um, I think very, if you've read The Night Circus, and you can even see by the cover, very Night Circus like aesthetic vibes. Um, their storyline is in no way related. Um, you can also think of Howl's Moving Castle. This is where they have different dimensions. So there's a gray London, a red London, and a black London. Each of those um, different worlds have, uh, like, the gray London is would be our London, where it's all gray and gross and rainy and humanity sucks. Red London is kind of utopia-ish, and then black London is kind of dystopia-ish. So that's, like, a very kind of dumbed-down version, because I'm really bad at summarizing. But great book. It, like I said... Good aesthetic vibes. That's honestly the best recommendation I can give you is I'm all about the aesthetic, sorry. Um, next one is a book that I know almost nothing about, but I picked up the sequel when I was in Half Price Books and it sounded really interesting, but I can't read books out of order, so I have to read the first one. And so it's called The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And so uh, this is a retelling of like a Russian fairy tale, and I love fairy tale retellings. Um, oh gosh, it's the story reminds me of another book I have on my shelf somewhere, but I can't remember what it is. So I'll probably oh East, that's what it is, a book called East, and I think it may be a, possibly the same retelling, but it's. Russian retelling of a fairy tale, um, so it's going to be obviously really dark and depressing, but, um, because Russia is dark and depressing. I read, uh, I read a history of Russia, one of Edward Rutherford's, of Ruskum, and that was the m most bleak book I've ever read. Russian history is just grinds, like, Philip Pullman kind of, like, tears you up. Russian history just like grinds you down. It's like if you don't get the glamour of a glorious death, you're just like downtrodden until you're a pile of ash. It's pretty rough. So I'm expecting the same kind of angst, and I'm all about the angst when I'm in an angst mood, um, which depends. I'm always an angst writer when I write, but not as much of an angst or medium angst reader. Next is another classic that I need to read because the TV series came out and I've heard it's really good and I really want to watch it, but I have to read the book first because I'm one of those people. Um, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm so bad at pronouncing names, it's really embarrassing, especially because I am a kind of a teacher. I'm a paraprofessional, so I work with kids with special needs. But... Um, doing any teacher related things you have all kinds of wacky names and it's just I butcher them so badly and I feel really bad because they're beautiful names and I try to be culturally sensitive in my pronunciation but it's like I pronounced pint as pint for half of my life and so it's not you it's me um so anyways American Gods um my husband actually just finished this and so he's been harping on me to read it and 
It's another one. I got this actually with him in an airport bookstore. There's a really great one um, at Milwaukee Airport. It's a uh, used bookstore, and it's one of those where it's just like lined with books shelf to shelf. And I fly in and out of the airport so much because I travel a ridiculous amount that um, the owner of the shop knows me, and so it's fun. He always helps me find new books. But this one looks cool it's very um the vibe I've gotten and particularly from people who have been from different countries when they've talked about it is it makes them want to like road trip across like the southwest and do like the sandy or not like sandy but like the dusty kind of gross motel like that kind of vibe where it's like the burnt out neon signs which as a person who has road tripped across the southwest it's not that quite like if you go in with a certain attitude i can see that but mostly it's just like sketchy as hell um we went like four hours without seeing any place that we could stop so you have to plan your gas ahead of time because there will not be for like an entire day anywhere for you to stop for gas so you have to plan out every single stop you have um and when I went I road trip with my husband and my sister-in-law when we moved him into his new navy base in um San Diego Coronado we road tripped and we stayed in like these god-awful motels and um we went to this one place and it was just like I guess this really crappy place in New Mexico where it was a beautiful, beautiful, like, lake oasis in the middle of this ring of mountains in the middle of the desert. But I guess where we stayed at in the lake was where all of the, like, white trash and frat boys went. And so it was one of the most uncomfortable experiences ever just because it was, like, that group of people where you just, as a girl, I didn't want to, like, take off like I didn't want to wear my swimsuit around them it was just like icky I so that was that was a bummer but I that I did get proposed to on that trip in White Sands New Mexico so that's a good spot if you decide to road trip according to Neil Gaiman's American Gods book where it's all like good aesthetic then I suggest that but like I said, I don't know if that relates at all to the actual summary of the story. That's just what I've heard. Um, another book. These ones are more ones that are super random that I've picked up at Half Price Books because I spend a lot of time there, even though it's a 20-minute drive away from me. But um, I've been cycling through a lot of my books, as well as I got a gift card there one time from my husband's grandma. She sent me a gift card for my birthday was nice that sucks and or no for my graduation and what else oh it's by it's really close to where um clothes mentor and plato's closet is and that's how i get half my income is by selling old clothes and then buying new inexpensive clothes um so i go there a lot so this book is an unkindness of magic and so this is another book um, if you've read The Magicians by, I can't remember his name, but it became a TV show as well. Um, but the book, it's very, once again, kind of grown up Harry Potter-ish, where it's like modern wizardry. If you've read A Discovery of Witches, this kind of has the same vibe, where it's um, wizards and witches in the modern era, except for this takes place in, I think, New York, and they're having like a competition, and all the people who are witches and wizards are like kind of blue bloods in the, in the um, New England area, East Coast. So um, it's wizarding competitions, lots of witches, go witch power. Um, if you haven't seen, no, I, if you're 18 or older, watch the Broad City Witches episode and it'll make your life. But if you are younger than 18, please don't watch it. It's highly inappropriate. But that gave me all the witchy vibes for 2018. 
um, currently working with Jewel, or not Jewel, with Melina to compile um, as many names of modern witches as possible. So if you have any suggestions, um, you can send me a message on Tumblr or on here, leave a comment. We've got um, Florence from Florence and the Machine. Um, I'm blanking. We have Enya. Who else? Lord is definitely a witch. Stevie Nicks has pretty much come out as a witch. Um, uh, yeah. So send more witches because I believe that there is conspiracy and they're actually around. Um, so yeah, this looks like good witchy vibes. Um, like I said, I'm a hoe for fantasy. So next book is Small Admissions by Amy Papel, I guess. Um, I got this one because it gave me, after I read The Hating Game, if you haven't read that, read it right now. It's a great, one of the only uh, contemporary romance books that hasn't made me want to puke and it actually had me like squealing. I've never been as happy as I was reading this book. I swear it was everything joyous in the world. And so after The Hating Game, I was like, I want to read all this contemporary romance because this is the best. But contemporary romance, it just like sucks ass. Like it is so bad. I, I have read some and I had to, I sent it to so many different friends because the writing of the smut was just like laughably bad just terrible but from what I can tell this gives me similar vibes as to the hating game where it's um but probably a lot less smut it didn't really give me smutty feels but um that that's what it looks like is um it's about a girl who becomes a, an admissions counselor at a private school and finds romance and also teachery things. Cause I'm all about those teacher vibes. Not enough good books about being a teacher. Um, or I haven't been looking hard enough, probably. I'm sure there's a list on Goodreads for that, and I'll have to look it up eventually. Um, so that is my general book haul. I could probably do like another hour of this, but this is a condensed version of all the books. I kind of want to read in April. I'll do a review at the end of April and see what I've actually read and give you guys, let you guys know how these actually went, if they sucked, how much I cried when I reread The Golden Compass, um, if, if American Gods actually took place in the Southwest, because I may actually be wrong about that. But yeah, I'm planning on giving you guys a review, so I hope you enjoyed my book haul. Let me know if you are reading any of these along with me. Let me know if you have any suggestions. I'm all about book suggestions. I have too much time on my hands right now um, because I'm only working part-time. And so all I do is read and scrapbook and do puzzles and watch trashy TV. So most of that is reading. I could probably honestly do a whole nother book talk or book haul on the romance books because I'm really trashy for those right now. But um, I don't want to take 10 hours to do this. So thank you for listening. Um, if you want to see my face drunk, um, go watch our booktube channel. That And I'll post all the links to my Tumblr, to the... Um, booktube YouTube channel and to the booktube Tumblr. I'm really cool on Tumblr. I'm a lot cooler than I am in real life. And um, that's where you can find if you're into uh, if you're trash for fan fiction. I write Harry Potter fan. I write fan fiction about Harry Potter's dead parents because I'm still in love with them. So if you ever feel like doing that, hit me up. Go on my Tumblr. Thank you for listening, and I'm surprised my cats did not make an appearance today. Maybe next time. Bye.